imagine being told that your dreams, ambitions should take a back seat because society believes that you are moving too fast or your pursuit of knowledge, success should be limited because of your gender. Wait for your cousin to obtain his master's degree before you, even with his scholarship, I was asked to slow down or hashichon or predodo, which simply translates that you rush too much. Sadly, the popular Ghanaian phrases that are stifled dreams and dream talent have been warned that becoming too powerful as a woman, too ambitious, would make me less appealing for marriage. These outdated notions are the sad realities many young women like myself face around the world. Let me ask, have you ever had this nudge to be more towards greatness, to make a difference, only to find yourself in an environment of limitations, setbacks, naysayers? I'm sure most of us have. So let me give you a quick backstory. My formative years were spent in a very vibrant community in the suburb of Accra. Though in the city, I'd say that our living conditions were far from ideal. Where I grew up, youth were often compelled to abandon their dreams, ambitions, and possibly education. Upon reaching teenage, girls were socially, psychologically being prepared for marriage rather than being encouraged to maximize their potentials. But then I dare to say that despite our struggles and underdevelopment, our community radiated a remarkable spirit of unity, togetherness. We were okay despite our struggles. And I was fortunate enough, my parents ensured that I had basic necessities as a child. So I went to one of the best schools in my community. But that wasn't enough for me. And this isn't to suggest that I found myself superior to others. But I wanted more, something different. And when I look around, people that were up there, most of them were empowered, educated. So I started to make education my guiding light. But then life, a remarkable journey, okay, where our carefully laid out plans can change in a blink of an eye. While I was happily awaiting for my high school results to be admitted to the university, then came a disheartening revelation. For some reason, my results couldn't be traced. I mean, the educational system that was meant to empower me had failed me, let me down. My parents, like many others, tried to rectify the situation, but still, my, parents, my results couldn't be traced. So I started thinking, was that going to be the end of my educational journey? Was I going to end up like people in my community? I felt like a failure, depression set in. And then life as often as it does then end there, it had more challenges in store for me. I can never forget the 1st of June 2013 when I woke up with a condition that mimics stroke symptoms. Here I was in the doctor's office. He said, you are too young to have Bell's palsy. And for those of you who don't know what Bell's palsy is, it's a condition that leaves half of your face paralyzed, your nerves being very numb. So that causes our unknown. Um, there aren't any cure. So I found myself in that situation. And statistics shows that one in 60 people experience Bell's palsy with 70% recovery. So how did I find myself in that situation? There was no cause. I mean, they couldn't find it. So the doctor said, probably it's your depression that caused it. I felt once again, my, self, my already fragile self-esteem was gone. So I kept asking myself, how do I get out of this condition? How do I empower myself to be a better version of myself? I was given headphone names like, gangster smile because when I smile my smile was like like that my face has shifted and this prevented me from speaking on platforms like these because I wasn't confident in myself 
What if people notice it and ask, what's wrong with your eye? Why is your eye twitching? Why is your mouth shifted? I was the literal definition of laughing at the wrong side of your face because my smile was like that. But that's not even the main catch for my conversation. In the midst of that, I found myself moving in with a wealthy relative in an upscale neighborhood, different from where I grew up. And though it came with its own challenges, it became my transformative face. Watching the opportunities that environment presented to other people, I saw them doing different things from where I grew up. I said to myself, my friend can do that if, had, if he or she had that opportunity too. So I said, how do I create that opportunity? Because it made me understand that we all have potential to us, but then it takes opportunities to maximize them. We can't continue to let change makers Usually they slip away because they don't have access to opportunities. So I decided to press the green button of my life to say, how do I empower myself to be able to empower others? So I came up with a blueprint, which I call the legit principle, which simply means leading with purpose, empowering others, growing through resilience, inspiring and transforming lives. So let's start with the first which is to lead. I believe that leadership exists between all of us, being it in our homes, our communities, lecture halls, workplaces, or even down to ourselves. Leadership begins with you and I. Where do you start from? Is it from your community? For me, as the first child and the only girl with three brothers, I've always wanted to be that motivation for my brothers and to be that change in my community. Though I didn't know how I was going to do it, so I always say that I started my leadership journey through volunteering. It gave me a sense of purpose, empowering others. It shaped my soft skills and then gave me platforms to bring out myself. But one may say that, how do I start? I have no influence. How do I even know that I, I am a leader? To me, I think it's pretty simple. Before you sit, okay, you stand. So I should stand for something. What are you passionate about? What is going on around you? What is that thing you need to be worked on? So in addressing these things or share with like minds, in addressing them, you have something to bring to the table. At least that is how I started. In the process, I began to empower people in ways that I didn't even know I could, which makes me understand that empowerment comes from taking actions. While working with UNDP Ghana, I came to a realization per community development. Many people from marginalized communities believe that the attainment of the sustainable development goals were for the UN, higher institutions, governments, elites, or even people in suits. So I said to myself, how do I make them understand that you and I individually, collectively, we can attain those goals in our own ways? So I mobilized um, like minds friends in my office. I initiated this conversation with my supervisors and thankfully I received their valuable support and we started fundraising from our office. And that is how we had our first school talk with NEJ Global Foundation. Today, our youth-led NGO is empowering young people to take actions towards climate change. We are addressing period poverty, ensuring that young girls are able to stay in school we provide them with sanitary towels, menstrual health education. Through our mentorship and training programs, we have over 7,000 beneficiaries across Ghana. We are providing mentorship and vocational skill training to people in marginalized areas, especially persons with a disability in the face of unemployment, without not having to wait on the government. As we go through life, we face setbacks, challenges, but I believe that it is in those moments we use as a catalyst to grow. I used to solicit for funds to attend conferences like this because I wanted to meet people that shared in my dreams, people that are already up there. And I didn't have means, so I would solicit for funds. I would empower myself, take lessons, courses. And now I've been invited to corridors of authorities with world leaders to make decisions on behalf of young people like myself. And a girl like me from where I grew up would have never had that opportunity if I hadn't improved on myself. So I say, merely having a seat at the table isn't enough. You need to 
continue, continue to improve on yourself. Use those challenges to grow and become a better person. As we live our life with purpose, with passion, we inspire others to do the same. We ignite change, not only within our community, but on a global scale. My background, we started from my underdeveloped community, continues to inspire me daily to create opportunities for people who face systematic barriers. And I believe that you can all join me. I decided to embrace change, to bring about change. As a result, I have evolved, overcome challenges, attained many heights. And this, I believe, is through the support I have received from family, friends, strangers, giants on whose shoulders I stand on today. That is why I have decided to use my life to promote leadership, empowerment, inclusion among young people. I strive to create a society where people do not have to face barriers based on their gender, their age, their background, or even their race. And I entreat you all to join me. It's a race that we can all, we can all win. Let's take actions, no matter how big or small it is. We can make changes, no matter what step we take. Believe in yourself to make that change. One thing I can leave you with is that whatever you visualize, you need to actualize. You need to think positive of your own self because you are the architect of your own future. My legend principle isn't for a selected few. It's a mindset, a choice available to all of us. Imagine a world where more and more young people decide to take action despite their struggles. My background was started from my underdeveloped community. My results getting missing. I found myself going back to the university, not just that, but going to a prestigious university like University of Salford for my master's degree. My facial paralysis, which prevented me from speaking on platforms like this. I found a strategy if I need to talk or take pictures because I wasn't confident in my pictures. I ended up deleted all of them. So I would pose like that. I overcame that challenge because I decided to empower myself. Imagine a world where all of us decided that we are going, not going to let that hold us back. We are not going to let naysayers hold us back. I love how Marianne Williamson beautifully puts it. Our deepest fear isn't that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We often allow imposter syndrome to get the most out of us. But then ask yourself, who are you not to be talented? Who are you not to be exceptional? Who are you not to be great? As a Christian, my Bible tells me that I am light. I am a city set on the hill. So I need to do what light does, shining unapologetically. And when you see me coming, that needs to really make you proud. So I challenge you all, break free from your self-imposed limitations. Let us rewrite our stories with courage, with determination, and unshakable belief in ourselves because we can. I believe in you, and I'm counting on you and you to make that difference. My name is Modeling Akosewuku, and I believe that I'm unstoppable. Thank you.